Direction refers to the path along which something is pointing or moving. It leads from one location to another. For example, we can say that we plan to travel from the tree to the hill or to the waterfall. But these directions don't make much sense if we don't know where the tree or the hill or the waterfall is. What we really want is some kind of stable point of reference, and ideally one that can be determined from anywhere on Earth. And for the most part, we use north as a point of reference. For thousands of years, travelers in the northern hemisphere have relied on landmarks and the north star, Polaris, to guide them. Polaris is a star located almost directly over the geographical North Pole, and the geographic North Pole is that point in the northern hemisphere where the Earth's axis of rotation, an imaginary line around which the Earth rotates, meets its surface. And if we extend that imaginary, imaginary line into space, it would eventually intersect with Polaris. When Polaris is visible in front of you, you are facing north. Behind is south, east is to the right, and west is to the left. The problem is that Polaris is not visible during the day or during cloudy weather or if you happen to be in the southern hemisphere. So travelers, and especially sailors, needed a better system. So sometime between the 2nd century BC and the 1st century AD, the magnetic compass was invented in China. Ancient Chinese people found that if a lodestone, which essentially is a magnetized rock, was suspended so it could move freely, say on a string, uh, it would always point in the same direction, toward the magnetic poles. However, it wasn't used for navigation there until the 11th century, and the magnetic compass didn't arrive in Europe until sometime in the 14th century, and some scholars think it came from China via Arab traders. The magnetic compass, as we understand it today, uh, works by using a free-floating magnetized indicator. In this case, it would be on that small pointer in the middle, uh, which usually has a, a magnetized piece of metal and the magnetized metal aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field and thus points generally north. The north arrow of a magnetic compass points toward the north magnetic pole, uh, which we call magnetic north, obvious enough. But what's not obvious is that the north magnetic pole is not the same as geographic north pole. Uh, the magnetic north pole is currently located in Canada, about 760 miles away from the geographic North Pole, and the magnetic North Pole actually continues to move all the time. The difference between the magnetic North and the true North is referred to as magnetic declination. Uh, so in order to find true North uh, with a magnetic compass, uh, you have to consult what's called an isogonic chart, and here's an example of one. Um, um, also referred to as a declination diagram. Uh, and this allows you to adjust for the difference between magnetic north and true north. So for example, here in Massachusetts, um, our declination is minus 15, which means that the compass always tends to point a little too far to the west by about 15 degrees. And so if, if you want to know true north with the magnetic compass here, you need to adjust for that difference between the two norths. So the most commonly used north for direction finding purposes is true north or geographic north. And true north is indicated either by citing Polaris or by aligning it along a northerly along a line of longitude because lines of longitude converge at the geographic north pole. So those two indicators, Polaris and lines of longitude, are how you can determine true north. So while we can indicate direction by referring to the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, we can actually provide more precise directions by providing what's called an azimuth. And an azimuth is a directional designation uh, that's usually measured in a clockwise direction from north. So again, going back to the point that north is our point of reference, so we're going to measure everything else from north. So here we have this direction diagram. I'm going to show you a little bit how it works. Okay, so when you're facing north, you're facing an azimuth of 360 degrees or zero degrees. Let's say zero, that's where we're starting from. Now as you turn toward your, towards your right, you are 
increasing the angle that's created. Okay, that angle is measured here. And once you approach east, you are forming a 90 degree angle, and so east is 90 degrees, and that's the azimuth for east. If you continue to toward, turn towards your right, the angle keeps increasing in size. Eventually, you're looking in the opposite direction from north, right? 180 degrees from north, which is south. If you keep turning towards your right in a clockwise direction, eventually you're going to face west, forming a 270 degree angle. So we'd say the azimuth for west is 270 degrees. And if you keep turning towards your right, you're going to end up pointing back in the direction you originally started from, which is north, or 360 degrees. So you eventually completed a circle or a circuit, uh, and that's the full possibilities of direction. Now again, you can always say north, south, east, or west, but when you provide an azimuth, you allow for a much greater degree of precision in terms of indicating the direction that you're in interested in, in, in looking. So when we say azimuth, we're referring to direction, but direction um, expressed in terms of an angle or a number ranging from 0 to 360 degrees. So this kind of way of describing direction is available to you in Google Earth, for example. So if we look at Google Earth, we access that ability to get our azimuth through the uh, measurement tool. So when we indicate, when we call it the measurement tool, and we go to measure something, you'll see that there's a number called heading. Okay, And that heading indicates the azimuth. So it's essentially the same thing. And so you'll notice that if you start from about zero degrees and move towards your right, you'll see the numbers increasing. And when you're looking east, it should be 90 degrees. And when you get south, it should approach 180 degrees. And so there you go. That's how you measure direction um, generally, but also in Google Earth.